Hello Akuma fans, Charlie with the Gossiker Applications staff taking a little break from the advanced one-touch videos today to deal with a customer request. This is a really good one and I think I've come up with a pretty cool system. We're working on a mill today and the request came in saying that, you know, hey, I, I'm in the middle of a production cycle and I have replaced a tool, measured it either offline or inside the machine, but when that tool comes in to be ready to be used, I would sure like some provision available in the control that will allow me to uh, you know, not be standing there waiting for that tool to come up so that I can walk it in and make sure that everything's cool. Maybe the holder's a little different, it's uh, got a different profile, or maybe the length is different. Maybe I'm just not sure that my offline presetter is set perfectly. Either way, I would like to be standing there when this new tool comes down into production, but I don't want to stand in front of the machine for the next hour and a half waiting for this tool to come up so that I'll, you know, remember to turn down the rapids. So, you know, Charlie, I'd really like to have something in there that uh, would help me out in this circumstance. So I came up with a couple of options here. If we look at this machine, let's go ahead and flip over to my collision avoidance display so that we can see what's actually going to happen. I just jotted up a real quick program. I'm using a tool change macro, and this is going to come into play here in a second. G116T1. And all this is doing is it's moving to XY0, it's dwelling for five seconds, then it's changing to tool number two. And, you know, okay, so this is just synthesizing a production cycle. It's also a loop, so this is going to go indefinitely until I take off my blocked skip. So let's go ahead and just run this just to see what exactly it's going to do. It comes up, and I pop tool number one in the spindle, move to XY0, and dwell for five seconds. Now, I don't have a graphic assigned to tool number two, but you'll get the point. I did it intentionally so that I could see a, a physical difference between the two. There's tool number two, and it's gonna do exactly the same thing, and then loop. So we're gonna pretend like this is a full production cycle with multiple tool changes, and um, we wanna, we're going to imagine here that, uh, let's go ahead and slow this down so that we can talk while it's, while it's running. So. Let's just say, for instance, that our tool number one here, it uh, broke, it's wearing, it's leaving some witness marks, whatever. So I, after it comes out of the spindle now, go baby, go, dunk, there. Now it's gone, I'm gonna slow down my rapid so we have all kinds of time to talk. So I got in the back and I replaced tool number one and I, I fixed it, uh, change the holder, whatever it was that I needed to do. Now I want to flag it. So what I chose was to, in my tool data page for tool number one right there, I have my offset. And rarely, if ever, do I use the third offset, HC or DC. And so in general, that is flagged or set to zero. So what I did was I changed this up so that any value other than zero in that geometry column, in the C column, will cause the machine to do something differently. So now let's speed it up and see what it does. There's my tool number two, it dwells for five seconds. Now this time when it calls up tool number one, tool one, bonk, and I get an M0 with a message that pops up that says, hey, this is a new tool, turn the rapid down. So I'll turn the rapid down, and then I will hit cycle slam, the message goes away, and now I can slowly move this tool into making sure it's good. Sound cool, right? That seems like exactly what we wanted. So let's look into how I did that. I'm going to hit the uh, uh, stop the machine here. So I hit my reset button so it stops, move him out of the way. Now, as I mentioned before, I'm using the G116 tool change macro. So I chose to make a little modification to this macro. We'll go into it in just a second how you can do it if you're not using a tool change macro, but 
let's start by seeing what I did to this individual macro. So, lib, the lib file is where the macros are contained. So if I get in here and edit this, right up on top of this tool change macro, G116. I did not modify anything inside the main body of the, the tool change macro simply because it works great. I don't want to mess with it. But at the very end of the macro, once it's done all of its logic and all of the stuff that I in invented the macro for, I added some lines of code. I said that if VTO DT, that is the system variable to read a tool life uh, extended tool data information. And then added VTLCN, that's whatever tools in the spindle, comma 1003. So what that entire uh, field reads there is I want you to go look at the extended tool data for whatever tools in the spindle and number 1000, I'm sorry, 10,003. Good thing I caught that. And that's instructing the machine to come over here and look at this, this field. That is 10,003 right there for whatever tool is currently in the spindle. Let's run back over to our program, take a look. So I told it that if that field is equal to zero, then skip all of this other logic. But if there's any value in there other than zero, it's going to continue on and populate a message. If you have the message function, that is a really cool little thing where I just say MSG and then whatever is in the parentheses is going to be displayed in that pop-up window for me and then an M00. If someone chooses to hit cycle slam at that point, it will then end message or no message, take down the, the message and it will revert that value back to zero. I want the machine to automatically turn off the flag for me. So all this is doing is saying, hey, if there's a value in DC for whatever tools in the spindle, I want you to pop up the message telling me what to do and stop the machine. Then when somebody hits cycle slam again, take off the message, revert the flag and continue on as normal. How cool is that? Now, if you don't have the message function, you're not dead in the water. I would just take this command right here, this uh, new tool, turn wrap it down, and put it on the same line as the M00. So what would happen is that when the, uh, when the machine stopped, that would be displayed on this line of code. Hey, that's awesome. But Charlie, I'm not using a G116 macro. What can I do? Well, here's the other solution. You can also create that code in a file extension that's labeled .ssb. Now I'm going to edit it, and I just added this one line here, otool. And so it's exactly the same code, but if I am using M6 in my regular tool uh, program, let's change this to read m6 whoops hey how about a caps lock charlie m6 t1 and after the tool call i would just add the line call o t o o l and what that's going to do is it is going to call up that sub identified as dot ssb and then it's going to continue on its way so hey that's a great little solution now, some people don't want to necessarily occupy HC. We could also do it using some of the tool life data. If, uh, if I came over here and flagged the uh, management mode or just some flag that I'm not using, but that seems a little more involved than just utilizing the HC. You could use the HB instead if you chose, just by changing your code to read Let's go into another file and edit that. Instead of being 10,003, I would change that to 10,002. But I happen to like, whoops, <laughs> fat finger. I happen to like using HC just because it's out of the way. 
easy solution, right? Akuma's got your back. So I hope this helps you out. And uh, if you have any questions or comments about this, uh, I, I always read my comments section. And um, I hope to see you out in the field again soon.